All right, welcome back, Kim Tall students. We are now on 3.5. We have skipped 3.4, and we're working on separating mixtures of ions by precipitation methods. This is a, a technique that could be done in the lab, but it's all based on theoretical understanding uh, of solubility and using that solubility table that we introduced in 3.3. So let's say, in example one, we had a solution where we had these positive ions, Ag plus and Ba2 plus, in a solution. How could we separate these cations from each other? Uh, and again, remember that we would have to have some sort of negative ion presence. So let's say we had uh, AgNO3. Um, And uh, for some reason, I guess we mixed that with BANO3 in brackets too. And we want to now want to separate these positive ions. So how would we do this? Well, we'd use the solubility, tab solubility table to find a negative ion, which will form a precipitate with one of these positive cations, but not the other. So not both. Okay, so let's go to the solubility table and decide what we're going to choose. All right, well, I'm gonna, we're going to speed this up. Let's look at what happens if we choose any one of these. Well, what we were looking at was uh, Ag plus and Ba2 plus. And as you notice, so right here, we have the Ag2 plus, which is low soluble. We don't see Ba2 plus on the bottom, so that means it's part of all others. And that means it is highly soluble in the presence, presence of those negative ions. All right, so let's go to our notes and fill that information in. So if we had these negative ions, Cl minus, Br minus, or I minus, these would all work. And a reminder that these things would exist have to be added with a positive ion. K plus is highly soluble, so let's use K uh, for to produce KCl, KBr, or Ki. Remember, K is potassium, which is a highly soluble uh, alkali metal. So when we add these three negative ions, the precipitate should contain Ag plus. We would have produced, let's say with a Cl minus, we would have produced AgCl2 solid. So then what we would do if we produce this precipitate in the solution, we would press the entire thing through a funnel with filter paper and we would capture the precipitate in the filter paper and the solution would pass right through. So we what would pass right through is dissolved Ba2+. Also, if we chose it, SO4 2 minus, so somebody saw that, um, they might pick that, but that would be a bad choice because it would form precipitate with both. Okay, so we don't want to choose that one. So let's just kind of look at why that is. So SO4 2 minus, if we began and we chose SO4 2 minus, someone might say, oh, hey, it forms precipitate with Ag plus, but it also forms a precipitate with um, the Ba2 plus that we we're looking at. So therefore, when we put both those positive ions in the presence of SO4 2 minus, we would produce two precipitates and they would all be mixed together. But if we did, in fact, did a two-step process, let's say we wanted to form two precipitates, we could do this as step one, because when we added one of these negative ions, we would, in fact, form precipitate of Ag, precipitate of Ag plus, and we could remove that. Then in step two, because now there is no Ag plus present, we could form precipitate with Ba2 plus and capture that in the filter paper. Okay, so let's go back to our notes. 
So the second problem here is kind of more like the how we would separate a whole bunch of ions and capture them all in filter paper. So let's say we had a solution containing these ions, Ag+, Ba2+, Na2+, and remind you that again, hey, these have to be in the presence of some sort of highly soluble negative anion like NO3-, minus. what ions could be added and in what order to determine which cations are present. So this solubility table was created for you and it's this is enough information will be on here for us to solve the problem, okay? Other, other negative ions could have been used as well. So let's look at what happens with Cl minus. Um, okay, so let's go to the data table. Let's erase all that stuff that we just had. And so remember, we are looking at Cl minus. And Cl minus combines with Ag plus to form precipitate. It's a little soluble. But Ba2 plus is up here as part of all others, and so is Ni, Ni2 plus. So it would not form precipitate with those. So let's add that information into our notes. So what we said, let's just put a check mark for, uh, to signify precipitate. So we form precipitate right here with Cl minus and Ag. Okay, let's look at SO4 2 minus. SO4 2 minus is right here. And what do we see? We see down below Ag plus again, Ba2 plus is on the bottom part, and part of all others would be our Ni2 plus. So going back to our notes, we say we form precipitate with Ba Ag2 plus, or sorry, Ag plus and Ba2 plus. Let's look at S2 minus next. So S2 minus is right here. Uh, we have Ba2 plus up here, but it is soluble. We don't see the other ones. We don't see Ag plus and Ni2 plus. That means they're both down here and they are low soluble. So let's add that information to our notes. So we said precipitate with Ag plus, precipitate with Ni2 plus. Hey, we got two more left. Let's do these ones uh, together quickly uh, on the data booklet. We have OH minus, PO4, 3 minus. Uh, so if we look up at the top, we don't have any of our positive ions. We don't, um, Ag plus, Ba2 plus, and Ni2 plus are not alkali ions. They're not H plus and H4 plus, SR2 plus. That means they are all part of all others, low soluble, and they form precipitates. Same thing happens with PO4, 3 minus. They're not part of the top part. They are not soluble. That means they are part of all others and they are in fact low solubility. So they form precipitates. So let's just add that information to our table and then we will be able to answer this, complete this question now. By the way, a little typo on your notes here. This should say Ni2 plus. Okay, so first of all, we should recognize that we cannot use OH- minus or PO4-3- minus because they form precipitate with all of the three cations. Cannot use OH- minus or PO4-3- minus because they form precipitate with all three cations. So step one, what we want to do is add Cl-. minus. First, because it forms a precipitate only with the Ag+, plus, as you look up top. So we're doing this, and this, here's our reaction. And when we do that, here's the deal, we, we have now produced AgCl solid. Put that in subscript, that's our precipitate. We would then pass that through a funnel and filter paper and collect the AgCl solid. I'm gonna put a yellow line through all this because we have now removed Ag and we do not have to consider that anymore. We just have the bottom two. So the bottom two, um, let's, we could go two ways. Let's look at this, let's say we were to uh, somebody selected SO4 2 minus. So if we add 
<coughs> excuse me, SO4 2 minus, you can see that SO4 2 minus forms a precipitate with Ba2 plus, right? So once we do that, we form that precipitate of a BaSO4. Let's put that here and subscript S for solid. And the only thing that would remain is the Ni2 plus. So that would be step two. And now if we had a step three, let's if we had a step three, we could add Ni2 plus. Well, first let's just go back a little bit. If we, because if you think about what we do not have to consider here, is once we've removed the Ba2 plus, oops. All we have, we could actually use any of those three at the end. Let's say we choose S2 minus as our last step. So S2 minus could be our last step. So once we add S2 minus, it would form precipitate with Ni2 plus, and then we would have formed three pre precipitates. But again, step two and step three are interchangeable. Somebody could have said, hey, we had SO4 2 minus as our second step, and then we had S2 minus as our third step. But if you added S2 minus as your second step, then your third step could have been SO4 2 minus. So our second step could have been adding S2 minus. And that would have reacted with the Ni2+, and then we would have formed Nis solid. And then we would have filtered that out, and the only thing, if, if that was our second step, then the Ba2+, would have still been present. So as I said, this must be step one. If the SO4 2 minus is step two, then this would be step three, but those two steps could be interchanged. Hey, you guys are good to go to complete the rest of the assignment. Good luck.